As the world races against time in finding the cure for COVID-19, there are still perceptions that the virus doesn't exist, even as the state authorities battle to flatten the curve of infections while issuing safety guidelines to stop community transmission. However, there are concerns of fatigue arising from dealing with the global health crisis. What is the way out of this? Well, before that, let's give you update on the rate of coronavirus infections around the globe today. The number of infections has surged to an all-time high of 16 million since it was declared a public health crisis six months ago. About 646,000 deaths have been recorded, while nearly 10 million have recovered. The United States still tops the list of countries with the most infections, recording nearly 4 million cases. Brazil follows closely with about 2.3 million cases. India is third in the list with about 1.4 million infections. Russia with nearly 812,000 cases and South Africa recording 445,000 confirmed cases. Or back here in Nigeria, the country has recorded more than 40,000 COVID-19 cases. Nearly 17,000 have recovered, while 858 deaths have been reported. This is COVID-19 Myths and Facts. I'm Esther Mopariola. Welcome on board. The World Health Organization is asking countries to adopt a comprehensive strategies based on local knowledge of where the virus is spreading, rather than keeping borders closed to halt the spread of the virus. According to the WHO Emergency Director, Michael Ryan, such measures cannot be kept indefinitely and are only useful combined with a range of other measures to detect and break the chains of transmission. Continuing to keep international borders sealed is not necessarily a, 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 a sustainable strategy for the world's economy, for the world's poor, uh, or for anybody else. So we really do have to make progress on beginning to do that, but do it in a way that is um, uh, least risky. Now, nearly six months since the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a public health emergency, cases are still on the rise and nearly 640,000 deaths have been reported. Even as other countries have succeeded in slowing their outbreaks, the global health body says to effectively slow down the spread of the, everyone, of this, of the infection, everyone needs to take simple precautions. Half a year into the coronavirus pandemic, mental health experts worry that many have reached a point of becoming emotionally overwhelmed. A cross-section of Nigerians feel so overwhelmed that they are unsure of how to move forward. There have been several instances of flagrant disregard for wearing of face masks and even observance of social distancing rules. The same scenario is seen in other climes. Many people remain sad and even disappointed that things haven't gotten better. Some people appear to have given up trying. And the World Health Organization insists there is no other way to go to stop the spread of the virus. Uh, what we understand We're asking everyone to treat the decisions about where they go, what they do, and who they meet with as life and death decisions, because they are. It may not be your life, but your choices could be the difference between life and death for someone you love. Indeed, this might not be the best of times, but some health experts offered this advice on how to combat the challenges of this crisis. Spend your energy intentionally. Instead of feeling daunted by so many crises in the world, choose one or two priorities where you want to have an impact. Pursue things that give you joy and hope. No one needs to be reminded that the world is awash in problems. In the midst of turmoil, you have to actively decide to find joy. Take break. Take care. Pay attention to when you're feeling tired and overwhelmed. 
Allow yourself to take a break from the stress and engage in a healthy, soothing distraction. Remember that we will come out on the other side. Remember that we will come out on the other side. Well, despite the rising number of coronavirus infections in Nigeria, many still doubt the existence of the virus, while others just, do, just don't seem to bother in observing the safety guidelines in stopping the spread. Now joining me live is a COVID-19 survivor, Ifedayo Durosini Eti, a sales and marketing executive, and she is here to share with us her experience in dealing with the virus. Good to have you on the program, Ifedayo. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Now, let's begin with your experience so far. We understand that in your, in your recent Instagram post, you said it was a month of terror. Tell us how you're able to deal with the crisis when it first hit you. To be honest, when I first you know, started feeling funny, I didn't believe that it was COVID. I, was, I didn't even think about it because, you know, I just felt it probably can happen to me. So I, 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 I started having body pains, you know, really high fever. So I went into the hospital and, you know, they did some checks and I was told that I had bacterial infection. But the pain was a lot, but I wasn't going. So everything they gave me wasn't working. I tried and tried and tried to like just, you know, get better. Nothing worked from, you know, antibiotics, all kinds of things that I was given and nothing worked. So it was not until the seventh day after I started feeling funny, so the pain started on the 1st of June, and then on the 7th day, I said, you know what, this pain is not is not going anywhere, so I had to go back into the hospital, and then the doctor advised me that since they've given me everything that they, they can, and it's still not going, maybe I should just get tested for COVID, so that evening, I started making some calls, and I decided to do um, a test that came out positive. Mm. Indeed, quite a journey. But, you know, it's, it's a month now since you've, this, you've defeated this virus. Could you tell us how you feel right now? Do you have any symptoms or are you better? Are you back to normal? Do you have any psychological uh, effect whatsoever? No. So I feel, I feel very okay. I feel very alive. I don't feel any symptoms. Um, but you mentioned something about psychological effect. I think that happens when you actually have it. So when I had it, because I have a very strong personality that, oh, I can, I can work through anything and all of that. But when I had it, it really, really broke me, especially because I was seeing people dying every day. So I started thinking, you know, these people were here yesterday. What happened overnight? How did their case escalate? You know, I knew, of, uh, uh, I knew someone who, you know, on Thursday, he seemed he was okay, into, like he wasn't really bad. And then Friday morning he died. So I'm like, what happened, you know, in between? So he really got to me and I was like, oh my God, please God, just help me through this season. And there was a night that I was really, really down. I was really sick. I started like my eyes, you know, were turning and rolling and I literally thought I was going. So, you know, that whole period when, you know, you cannot really see anyone. I had to isolate away from my, my family. I had to stay on one floor in the house and no one was allowed to come in. A sex one was bringing me food. So I think that period was really, really, you know, you're, you're, you're lonely. But you know, thank God for social media. So at least I can still speak to people and you know, um, WhatsApp calls and stuff. So it didn't really feel like I was alone, but it was it was really, really, it really, really affected me, especially because I couldn't really tell people at the time. Just very few close friends and family knew what I was facing at the time, and I was still you know going on with my normal social media posting and stuff. So nobody really knew how ill I was. So. It was really, really bad psychologically, but as soon as I got better, like immediately I was told I was negative. It was like, you know, something came over me, like some sense of energy and, you know, I was okay. And since then I've been fine. So has all of this experience changed your perception about coronavirus? Oh, yes. I think, to be honest, I already knew a lot about the virus because in my community, I have a community of entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs and professionals. We had already brought in a doctor who works in the natural respiratory unit in, in the NHS in London. So he had already even spoken to us about the severity and how to avoid it. You know, he also contacted the virus, obviously, from treating patients and all of that, Dr. Gupta. So I already knew the severity and everything. So it wasn't like, oh, I was, I was flippant or anything like that. I was very careful. You know, I wore my face mask. I wore my, I used my sanitizers. I used the face shield, everything. So 
I still have the same, you know, respect for the virus. Um, it's just the the only difference is, you know, I can come from a place of experience and you try to like teach people through my own experience how right. to and, deal and with talking about people. teaching people, if I die, I'm sorry for interrupting you there. Talking about teaching people now, what are your thoughts on the people's disbelief about the virus and how are you able to, you know, ensure or make them understand the severity of this of this situation? Yes, so I've been doing that, like I said, even before I had the virus. So now, from a place of experience, I tell them, you know, you need to social distance. You know, that's the only way you can actually not contact it. Because even if you're, even if you think you're staying at home, because I was home most of the time, somebody can still come into your house and then, you know, give you the virus without you even knowing it. So social distancing is the best way. If you don't need to do anything outside that is not that urgent, just stay at home. Mm. That's what that's what I tell everyone. Just try to stay safe, stay at home, use all the necessary precautions all because right. this virus, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you very much, Ife Dayo, for sharing your, your insights with us and, of course, experience. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And that's it for today's episode of COVID-19 Myths and Facts. Remember, you can follow us on our social media platforms for updates. We're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram using the handle at TVC News NG. You can also get details using our, you can also get details or report on our website, tvcnews.tv. Until the next one again, I am Esther Amapariola. Take good care and stay safe.